the Vermont loophole VIN verification is back for most of 2020 and all of 2021. The requirement to do a VIN verification was waived by the state of Vermont for the title loophole because of COVID. Now that it's been a year and a half or so, the Vermont DMV is requiring VIN verifications, but we're going to show you how to make that easier and maybe be able to avoid it altogether, even though it's back in action. So what is the VIN verification? Well, here's the form. Um, it's called the VD010 form, and it's to be completed by the applicant, which is you. If we prepare the documents for you, we'll do this form for you as well. And then there's a place where it has to be completed by an authorized personnel, and we'll talk about who that is. Why does the Vermont DMV require a VIN verification? Well, when Vermont is providing this registration title loophole, they're doing it based on the VIN number that you provide to them or we provide to them if we're doing the process for you. They want to make sure that the VIN number that's entered is correct. So whatever VIN number is on the paperwork, they're going to have somebody look at that paperwork, look at the vehicle to make sure they match. Because if they don't match, if there's one digit off or there's a typo, they're going to give you a registration for a vehicle with the wrong VIN number. And they found in the past and that there's a certain percentage of VIN numbers that are entered wrong on the forms. And if they don't verify it, they're going to send out thousands and thousands of incorrect registrations, which then they have to fix or it creates a problem for somebody else's vehicle, or you won't be able to title your vehicle. So they came up with this verification of VIN, or HIN is for a haul on a vessel, on a boat. And somebody has to look at the paper and look at your vehicle to make sure they match. Who can it be? Well, has to be a law enforcement agent, DMV agent. In some cases, it could be um, an attorney, sometimes a notary. But the organization, agency, department name is written in this box. The printed name of the person and their signature goes here. If they have a credential, badge, or radar number, it goes in this box. And the VIN number must be entered by the official on this section. They put the state, date, where it was done, what town or city, odometer reading, and they have to check off that they ran it through NCIC to find out if it's stolen. They don't want to be registering any stolen vehicles. Now, can you avoid this? Well, what we found is if you submit the VD119 form, which is the application form, very neatly typed done correctly, no questions, no um, issues, sometimes they'll not require this. They can require anytime they want. And technically, they're supposed to get on every one. But if you, if it's easy for you to do this VIN verification, go ahead and just get it done. That way you won't get it sent back. But if it's going to be very difficult or inconvenient for you to do the VIN verification and you type up the form, and you submit it very neatly with the right bill of sale, no mistakes, no errors, and everything looks good, nothing sketchy, it might go through without it. But you're taking a risk that it's going to take you two weeks to find out that they need the VIN verification. Now, if it's a motorcycle, you're going to have to do this no matter what. Cars, trucks, you can maybe sometimes get away with it. But if you have a motorcycle, you need to do this. They will send it back without it. So yes, the VIN verification waiver for COVID is over. You have to do this for the Vermont process. If you want to take a chance and send in your package without the VIN verification, um, you can try that. Just make sure that your form is typed very neat, your bill of sale is neat, all your paperwork is done, the fees are correct, because if there's anything wrong with it, they're going to kick it back. Also, there's another reason why it's good to type your forms. The Vermont processing is largely automated, meaning that if they get all your forms and it's typed, they have computers that read these forms. And if they see everything's typed in big, bold font like we do, sometimes they can process it instantly without a person actually touching the papers. And you'll get your registration and plates back quickly. If it's handwritten or if there's something the computer can't read, it gets kicked out, it goes to manual processing. Now it's gonna take a couple extra weeks longer. So type your forms, get everything right, and you have a chance of avoiding your VIN verification for a car or truck, 
and getting your plates back much, much quicker than if you hand wrote it and it's all scribbled and messy.